Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin the Food Entrepreneur's Podcast. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B-I-Z-Z-A-R-R-O. For anyone who's out there who wants to find us out there, you can find us on Spotify or anywhere else you grow yourself through podcasts, and you can find us on Instagram at Justin the Food Entrepreneur's or at Justin Bizarro. That's where you can DM us or contact us if you want to be on the podcast or you have questions for the listeners or you have something you want to um ask me. So I generally, I'm going to introduce our guest first, Andy Atkins. How are you doing today, Andy? Oh, dude, I'm doing great, man. Just starting out the week with a bang, you know, I love doing these podcasts. So it's a good time. Yeah. So Andy is with or started, found, created, masterminded the bad luck burger club here in Nashville. And so I'm going to let Andy tell a story, and but I want to tee him up a little bit. I'm going to give a little commentary just on something, and just so it answers some questions also, and, and we'll talk about it on the podcast. But Andy, you can feel his energy. I already feel his energy. The minute I picked up the phone and heard Andy's voice, the energy, I felt it when I texted him. I can feel it in his, his Instagram, and I know that's hard for everyone to understand, but when you're a successful human and you do things the right way and you build successful businesses, whether it's over a year or over it's 24 years like like I did, it's you understand that energy and those humans you communicate and you just understand that that human is trying to do good in the world and has good energy for the world, okay? So that's what's number one. Number two is what's going to happen with the podcast is this, Okay. We have someone writing new music on the front and the back side. We're in Nashville. Already hired the two kids to do it. Young entrepreneurs. I'm going to give them a shot. <clears throat> That's what the podcast is about, right? Sorry, guys. I'm losing my voice a little bit here and there. And um, so that, but then we stack in episodes because when we stack in the episodes, because this is an entrepreneur podcast, I need to stack in the, in the content. And let me, I don't know how else to explain it to anyone is I'm not going to advertise <clears throat> the Jordans that are on sale in the store unless I'm sure they're stocked to sell them, unless it's a pre-sale, unless I'm getting everyone hyped up for the Jordan, George is a bad example because they sell out in a day and then they're sold on a secondary market, whatever else it is that's like that. So what you have to do is you, I have to stack in the content and then we push it because if I don't have enough content and people start listening to it and it gets back to the old content that's maybe even years old before we relaunch properly, then it's not going to keep the users and the marketing and advertising money and time and effort would be wasted. So in any business, it's like that. You gotta stack up the discipline. You gotta stack up little wins here and there. You gotta show consistency that you can do something, and you gotta show that you have the discipline to get it done before you go saying to the world like, "This is what we have." That's the way. That's me. Unless you have millions of dollars and you just want to throw them at marketing, but that's not who I am. I'm an entrepreneur, so I stack things in. I layer it in over time because I believe that the greatest asset is not how much money I can make how fast. It's how much can I learn that benefits me the best in the industry I'm in and the business I'm in and growing the people around me so we all benefit. And that's really, I don't know how to emphasize that enough because it's an energy thing in in business and in life. And wherever you work, whether it's corporate environment, there was some entrepreneur that had some energy that grew a company that you guys now work for. So that's what we're talking about. So that being said, Let's talk to Andy. Andy, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm absolutely excited to have you on. Andy, tell us your story. Like, what's your background? Did you start in food? Like, where'd the entrepreneurial spirit come from? Um, has it always been there, or is it something you found later in life? Uh, sure, dude. Um, First of all, I'll be remiss if I don't mention that it's not all just me as the brainchild like you mentioned before. I do have a partner. His name is Cody Driggers, uh, one of my best buddies and partner in this business. Um, me and Cody both have a very similar background. Um, grew up in music, uh, you know, as a, at an early age, like 13, 14 years old, start playing drums, start playing guitar. 
uh, got really into punk rock and heavy metal and uh, all forms of rock and roll. And like, that's all I cared about as a youth. And, you know, I was a pretty bad student in high school, <laughs> failed out a bunch of classes, like, you know, just textbook, like kid that wants to play guitar and doesn't give a care about anything else in the world. Oh, uh, yeah, so, that was me um, and being an entrepreneur, especially when I got to college. I think I got two Fs in college for sure, because I all I wanted to do was do business. And I wasn't like my undergraduate degree, which just wasn't giving me what I wanted to be. And I didn't realize that being an entrepreneur means hard knocks. But I agree with you. Go on, dude. I love this. So, yeah, um, you know, grew up in a small town, like an hour and a half outside of Nashville. It's called Paris, Tennessee. And uh, started a few bands here and there and moved to Nashville. And long story short, played music all the way up until I was about 30 years old. I was in a signed, uh, you know, national touring act that ended up doing international stuff. I've been to like 19 countries and every state in the continental United States and uh, released like four full-length records on a record label and i did that whole thing and it was awesome and uh my whole life that i have now i'm 41 right now everything that i have in my entire life came from that and i mean it like uh every bit of knowledge that i have about how to be an entrepreneur and how to run a business every relationship that i have the wife that i'm married to uh, we met when I was on the road and touring. Uh, every relationship and friendship I have is from punk and hardcore and metal. And so um, that was an awesome time in life. But like when you're playing in a heavy metal band and, you know, I'm like a 300 pound ball dude that screams real loud in a microphone. Yeah, yeah like I love a, it. There's a glass ceiling to that world, you know, I mean. There's only really so high that you can get financially and successfully in that. Absolutely. And uh, it wasn't really about that. But once you like get in your 30s, you're like, oh, man, like I want to get married. Some of the guys in the band want to have kids like you need to kind of grow up. So uh, without having any skill or education or anything like that, I kind of just fell into working um, random jobs, you know, for probably close to a decade uh after after the band was over but kind of eventually fell back into the music industry on the um on the back end of it like in production so not on stage but building stages so i uh for a good while was touring with bands uh as a stage carpenter setting up stages and then worked for a company here based out of nashville that would send out gear and and guys out on the road so you know think about any big arena tour you've ever seen um you know there's companies like mine that send out guys in gear so that there are actual stages that they can stand on and play music on um so i did that and like uh cody's story is very similar in mine that he like you know toured the world and played music and was in a signed rock band and so we just knew each other from that world and kind of you know rub shoulders at different uh festivals and event events and venues and and shit like that for years and not like super close friends at the time but just always kind of knew each other and and liked each other so um get getting to the burger club uh in 2020 when everything in the world shut down um, my life came to a halt because the music industry, that's like 2020 is like the first year, the first event ever that hit the music industry that drastic. Like there's pretty much always been live music no matter what. And then all of a sudden it's done because you can't gather anywhere. And well, our entire company and industry came to a halt. And uh, long story short, I had a chance to like – stay in that job but really struggle for a while or to step out and try to figure out what the next step in my life was going to be and I was already pretty unhappy in doing what I was doing I was I was making the most money I've ever made in my life um in spring of 2020 um but I wasn't happy because 
you go back to being in a band. A band is just a small business with your best friends. You're getting Absolutely. to play art, play music, and and be an artist, but it's running a small business. And once you do that for a decade or so, and then you spend a decade working for other people again, you start missing that fire of being able to build your own thing and do your own thing and be your own boss and not have to really answer to anybody. Um, you know, at this point in my life, I'm married, so I do have uh, my better half to answer to, but as long as she's happy and I'm happy, we're happy together, you know? Um, so when he stops everything and, um, you know, trying to figure out how to make ends meet around the house, really, you know, I'd started... Uh, I work on motorcycles a lot, like in my spare time for fun. So I like started working on other people's bikes and uh, building decks and fences and just anything. Cause I'm kind of one of those dudes that like you watch a few YouTube videos and you can figure out how to do something and then you can go to do that. Yeah, thing. me and, too. And I will do any of those things if it means I don't have to work for the man. So I will right. do anything, anything. I will figure out anything. I will scratch my way through anything in life if I don't have to do anything. So I love this. Keep going. Yeah. So that my entire 2020 and 2021, first half of 2021, was just me um, – Throwing darts and seeing what sticks, you know, and just trying to pay my bills. And uh, Rachel, Rachel knew how unhappy I was at the job that I had. And she said, do it, man. Figure out your life. Figure out what makes sense. As long as we can pay our bills, I support you, you know. And so while I was, like, scratching at, you know, at the surface to try to figure out what that next thing was going to be, um, I bought a griddle, like a flat-top consumer griddle at home and started making cheeseburgers for fun and other stuff too you know but like my story in the cheeseburger thing is i went over to a couple of my friends house two of the dudes that were in my band uh they were making smash burgers one night at their place we always loved like in and out burger and shake shack and stuff like that when we used to tour so and there wasn't really anybody in Nashville doing that at the time and so they were trying to make smash burgers one night at, at Blake's house and um, I was like these are cool but I think I can do it better you know and so I went home and I ordered a flat top griddle and started making cheeseburgers at home and this is where Cody comes back into my life it's like you know two guys that always knew each other through the years playing music um, he starts sending me messages on Instagram saying yo dude I got a griddle too and I've been making all these different burgers, and it's so fun. And, uh, you know, this is at the time when nobody can hang out with each other because, like, yeah, you know, everybody's staying in place and wearing masks and stuff. And so Cody and I start talking all the time about cheeseburgers, and I actually got COVID, and right about the same time, Cody's wife, Caddy, got COVID. Um, and, like, you know, we go through our healing and – and uh, whatever, you know, quarantine time and stuff. And then we start deciding, like, our two couples could start hanging out together safely and be around each other. And so we just started, like, hanging out and making cheeseburgers all the time. And I had already been on this path of trying to pay the bills any way possible. So I'd actually already started talking to a guy and made some branding for myself and was going to do a little cheeseburger pop-up and try to see if I could, you know, sell a couple hundred cheeseburgers, you know, over the course of like a couple months or something. You know, I didn't know how successful that would be. I just thought it'd be like a fun, a fun little side hustle to try to make some money at. And Cody loved the idea and was like, dude, I would love to be a part of doing something like that. Like I've always dreamed of having a little burger spot. And so we, instead of like trying to, go this thing alone like i scrapped the entire idea that i had of my thing and me and cody just started brainstorming names and brainstorming burgers and like this was sometime in 2020 still and then by like spring of 2021 we had developed what we think is like the the best cheeseburger which is very similar to the cheeseburger we started out with but we had to go in a lot of circles to do a lot of r&d and 
and you know be sure that the burger that we're going to come out of the gates with is the one um so we came up with a name and we came up with a burger and uh we actually set up a a tent and a couple griddles in cody's front yard <laughs> that's incredible this is, that's incredible this is sometime still like might have been march or april of 2021 and people are still like pretty like scared of being around each other so what we did was like set up like time blocks we we basically sent out private invites to um all of our friends we 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 prepped 80 cheeseburgers and we sent out a bunch of invites to our closest friends and gave them time blocks saying hey you can come for this 10 minutes you gotta leave you come for this 10 minutes you gotta leave like so that way people could still like, you know, feel safe about all the stuff going on with COVID. And we basically just had a party in his front yard and gave away 80 cheeseburgers. Uh, we had started an Instagram account and that, you know, we, we were like, Hey, these burgers are free. Uh, here's a Venmo if you want to tip us, but you know, it's not necessary, but if you like what we're doing, post a picture of it and put it on the internet. Uh, I see, because I was like, how did you get so much following so quickly? How did you, because like in today's age, you almost need to create a funnel where people are sharing content and and it's it's spiraling, but I see how you did it now so quickly. Go on, I love this. Yeah, so, you know, and like, uh, I I get that this is like a funny thought or funny statement, but like, Cody and I come from the music industry. Absolutely. music kids are cool like everybody's all tattooed up and like they dress cool and everybody wants to be a part of what those cool kids are doing right so if you give away 80 cheeseburgers to 80 of the coolest kids in town and they all post a picture about it and put it on the internet and this thing doesn't exist yet nobody knows where they can find it and they're like holy shit i gotta i gotta find that thing that looks sick so, like, before we had ever even had a public service, like, we had already had, like, over five or 600 followers before we even, like, went out into public. And so then on May 1st of 2021, we finally went and did a, a tent pop-up at our friends on a barbershop on the west side of town in Green Hills called 4010 Barber Studio. Um, it's just kind of like a high-end, simple class cuts you know and um they let us come set up our tent over there and before that had even happened other people started reaching out to us saying hey can you come set up here too so with our first weekend we did two or three services our very first weekend because people had already heard about us and after that first weekend of public services um we were we had all of our debt we we barely put any money into it a couple griddles and some tents and uh table covers and you know meat and all that you know just very small Absolutely. startup costs I, I bet we had super less than five grand put into this thing you know maybe like a couple grand total in the very beginning but we we were in the black profitable second day of publicly serving food to people and then we just kept going and sorry this is i feel like this is so long-winded keep keep but, going um, this is what we do here this is it's all about you guys we want to tell the full story because everyone goes through this go ahead right on well yeah and then we just um we got really lucky in like those first week or so like there were so many cool pictures of cool cheeseburgers and cool people eating cool cheese for our first like calendar year pretty much i didn't have to ask anybody if we could come sell cheeseburgers like we just got every bar and every brewery and every farmer's market in town were reaching out to us uh asking us to come and uh it's not lost on cody or i that we we trapped this thing in a bottle that a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of food entrepreneurs like chase their whole life trying to get you yeah know? can i um, pause you there actually andy sure. i'm gonna pause you there because i do want you to keep going i was gonna let you keep going but you hit something that is so important and i need to just back up because you did trap something in a bottle but it 
it's because you gain the skills to trap it. And I, I just, I need to pause everyone because I don't want everyone to, to think something. But let's go back to the beginning, okay? First off, you're in a band. First off, you're right. What, what many people, especially in Nashville, are, that are in the music business, especially the headliner bands that are in the honky tonks, you're a business. You're actually an entrepreneur, okay? I think everyone understands maybe that we're a business, but I think that you're an entrepreneur and you need to be creative and you should read the book, The Magic of Thinking Big, like ASAP is probably important because often it, adding that simple twist to, to our mindset, like I talk about this all the time. I say that I was born an athlete. That's because I, I have a certain lifestyle that I live, but it's just how I feel. I've always been born running, playing soccer, or CrossFit. Like, ever take anything away from me active, I don't know what's going to happen. So there's certain things that are just ingrained in us and who we are, and it's important to follow them. And it's also important to hear, like, that he, they follow music. That's what was true to Andy and his friends. And because he followed his skill, okay? When I was a kid, I followed soccer, but I also followed entrepreneurism, okay? And here's what's important. is because I, at such a young age, started mowing lawns and my parents taught me money and how to lease the tractors from them and pay them back for the diesel fuel, I learned the value of business. So I was getting what kids got in college by the time I was three, four, five years old. Okay, turn on the turn on the ignition, put me on the tractor. This is what you mow. I'll trim it for you. You pay me this for trimming it. You pay me this for the time on the tractor. You pay me this for the gas, so on and so forth. And this is what you're left with. Oh, and by the way, you're going to save two thirds of it always for your future. And they instilled that in me. So what happens in the music business, because there's the touring, because there's the hard knocks that Andy said that it's it's constant, like 10,000 hours happen so much faster, and here's why. Musicians create distance in this way. They never stop going. They go seven days a week. They have to. Okay? It's whether they're not working, they're working on their business. Whether they're not working in it, they're on it especially if they're good musicians. And that's often the difference between great musicians and good musicians. It's not a talent thing in the spectrum. It's how much can they tie all of it together and understand that it's a visionary thread for their life, okay? The other thing I want to say about Andy is regardless of education, Andy got educated in the art of business by being in a band, okay? So we talk a lot about four E's that are important. There's a lot more E's, and I talk about a Centurion Leadership Battalion. But the four I'm going to talk about right now, again, is exposure, experience, education, okay, and energy, okay? The energy that's in the music business that he talked about that attracts everyone, that's called the laws of attraction okay people want that so by we're talking a fire in a bottle he's actually creating his own fire okay when they're saying they caught the lightning in the bottle not only did they have the skills to catch it they were creating it but they also got the skills to create the lightning i want to emphasize that because the musicians have and creative people have a way of turning on their personalities and and being energetic Okay, and that attracts people. That's the laws of attraction. I'm attracted to your positivity. I'm attracted to your energy. I'm attracted to your go get it attitude for 20 years. Andy's been 20 years doing this. I know what that's like hustling for 20 years, constantly following your dream, constantly going from this business to that business, building one business, but trying always to be better and always trying to gain more skills in life. And for me, it's I call it a renaissance man. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. I may date myself, but it means a well-rounded human where I'm like intellectual, but yet I know I don't know anything and I'm humble and yet I'm courageous and bold and brave and know that I can conquer anything I really set my mind to other than be like a professional basketball player because it's definitely out of the question, not going to happen. So like realistically, so the thing that Andy said about catching the lightning in the bottle, he did. I agree with him. The amount of success that they have on Instagram and everything like that, it's true. But what we forget is lifetime experiences and how we gain them And how we gain distance on everyone else and the other entrepreneurs out there or the other musicians out there or the other athletes has a lot to do with mindset. And some people, people, humans, it takes longer, okay? Because 
for whatever reason, the stacks need to happen in multiple silos. That's what I'll call it. It needs to be in music, uh, building stages, and in throwing burgers on a griddle. But all of it matched together, the marketing, the advertising, every all of those skills that you had in music. Here's what I love about this. What I love about the music business, it's a very individualistic business because the individual creativity to make it has all to do with the individual. It's like a lot like sports, my individual talent, even though I play for a team. But in all the rest of the world on entrepreneurship, it isn't quite the same. There isn't quite the competitive individualism that exists in such a concentrated basis. And so when, and for like, I've noticed this when musicians, because of this, like truly talented, thought-driven, reflective, um, energetic musicians figure out how they harness these powers and then also are able to really take them outside of music and truly harness them. Like the world doesn't stand like as much of a chance. And I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. It's like growing up on a farm, growing up with entrepreneurial parents, then starting a business while I'm 18 years old. Like it just created distance while everyone out, like by the time I got to 30, I agree with you, life got a little more serious and there was nothing I was more focused on than building multiple businesses and growing myself. I got a little distracted over the later years trying to figure out what to do about family and stuff. But it's, um, it's one of those things that I agree with you, Andy, and I agree you caught lightning in a bottle, but I agree that for some reason you guys learn the tools and the skill set by constantly never giving up and being willing to be creative and try and then applying the things that you skills you knew that worked from all those years of uh, building the stages. And did you guys do rigging also? I know, but some of that does stage work. I don't know if that's all what you were talking about, but all of that type of stuff matters. You know, coordinating the tours, coordinating when the band's going to show up, what happens when the bass member's sick and we need another bass guitarist. Like that shit happens here. Like, unbelievably, I didn't realize how much stuff moves around here. Like, getting a drummer around from place to place is not an easy task. And so, I just want to emphasize that, Andy. So, let's talk about, you've caught the lightning in the bottle. What do you do with it now? Yeah, man. Uh, so, we just, um, you know, we got lucky in the fact that we got a lot of steam. We had a lot of eyes on us and people, you know, keeping us busy going out and all of this was happening while Cody still had a full-time job at the time. Like after Cody left his band, man, you should get Cody on here sometime. He's good. He's got a great entrepreneurial mind too. Um, but Cody was, he was working on, um, he was working for a merchandising company. So he was on the other side of like, you know, you got to have shirts to sell at your shows and stuff. So like, he was working for a company that did that um, and had been there for a good amount of time and then enjoyed his job and liked it. He worked with a friend there uh, that owned that business. And um, so Cody was full time doing that while we were like, you know, booking a ton of burger gigs on the weekends. And for me at the time, I was, you know, just still building decks and working on bikes and whatever I could and I could tell that, like, out of all the things that I had going on at the time, that this burger thing was the thing that was going to have legs to stand on. It was the thing that was going to, you know, be the most lucrative for me. And I enjoyed it the most at everything I was doing. So, like, you know, I, I kept checking in with Cody being like, yo, man, like, are you cool that I'm, like, booking us with so many gigs when you have a full-time gig? And, like, what's your feelings on this as a, as a next step of being like a full-time part of your life. And so he was like, man, I'm ready. Like, let, you know, let's see what we can do with this. And, you know, he's got his own life and his own story of, you know, finances and what he needs to make to, to make it make sense for him to leave his job. But we basically had decided that, if we could, because in the very beginning, we weren't taking very much money personally from this. All of the money was going into a bank account to like build up the business and keep buying stuff that we needed and new, new tents and new griddles and new this. And, you know, like there, there's an even longer story about how like uh, 
the tent thing setting up underneath a tent with a couple griddles in a parking lot that is not okay that, yeah. like the health department is not okay with that <laughs> yeah, that um, is very and, true That's and so during true. covid they were just kind of like letting everything slide because everybody's just trying to figure out how to pay their bills and they had way more shit to deal with than people making cheeseburgers on the sidewalk <laughs> But, like, once things started getting back to normal in 21, 22, like, they, they're going to start coming for you, you know? And so we realized that, like, the only next step in being able to, like, continue doing this is to, you know, get into a food truck or get into a brick and mortar. And, and we got zero money and zero knowledge of how to get into a brick and mortar at that moment in our life. Yeah. So, like... um like Cody was like, dude, let's chase this. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep putting up, putting in a lot of work in the background while you're still doing your job. And when we can get, oh, where I was going in the beginning was we weren't taking very, any money so we could build this business. And we had a pretty good amount of money in a bank account that was just growing and growing and growing from all of our services. And we were barely taking any financials from it for ourselves. Excellent. And, and once we decided that we could buy a food truck, outfit the food truck, get it wrapped, like all the things that we need to make the next step and get to a spot where we believe that we can replace. We heard this knowledge from Nathan Gifford, who owns Gifford's Bacon Shop. That's a great dude you should have on your show. He's awesome. We've learned so much from so many people in Nashville um in the food industry that's a whole nother tangent where we didn't know anything about food and i've sat down and had so many really great conversations with people that did this before us that gave us so much knowledge and it's crazy that people are just willing to share information with you and it's not competitive and you know there are some competitive people out there but there are people that really want to see all of you guys everybody succeed um and so nathan gifford who owns Gifford's Bacon, said something that clicked with Cody and I that said, hey, figure out how to replace your paycheck, whatever you're making right now. Figure out how to make enough money doing what you want to do to cover that, and then you can leave your job. Yeah, And that's what we did. We find, yep. you know, like, I'm, I'm probably, like, full disclosure, making a little less money than what I used to make. But, like, we got to where it pretty much made sense where like Cody could leave his job and feel comfortable and still afford his lifestyle. And I could give up all of that other stuff I was doing, like, uh, you know, building bikes and fences and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just focus on this thing. So February 21 or February, 2022, this year, this February, um, Cody left his job and, um, we were doing like a kitchen takeover actually at the time. Like there was a local bar here in town called Lakeside Lounge that let us uh, work through their kitchen all last winter because it was too cold to be in the tent, you know. Um, and we moved into our food truck in April of this year. And we've just been full time Bergen ever since and uh, learning a lot, you know, like we had to learn so much stuff about like all the permitting and you, you know, you, you start this thing with just this, this funny idea of selling cheeseburgers to your friends. And when you start like, you know, selling so many burgers every week, you're like, Oh, I guess we should get a business license. I guess we should get a business bank account. I guess we should go to the health department and figure out how to legally do this. And then you're like, Oh, you also have to have permits from the water department. You have to have permits from the fire department. And like, there's all this stuff that you don't know any of this stuff exists unless you've grown up in it or gotten schooled in it or whatever. And like there are people that have been working in the, you know, hospitality and food and in kitchens their entire life that know this stuff like the back of their hand. And Cody and I are one building a business like on the business side of things, financials and growing and scale and stuff like that. But then you're also having to learn a new trade, which is like, you know what temperatures you're allowed to keep food outside of the fridge refrigerator for so long before it's bad and like you're just learning so much stuff um it's like a crash course and yeah it's you, like drinking water through a fire hose being in the food business sometimes i swear because every food type of food has a different temperature and different item and 
it's a lot to keep track of for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's been, been fantastic, man. Like I'm a type of dude that really likes to try to broaden my knowledge and learn new things. Like my entire, you know, most, I barely listen to music anymore. I'm listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos daily about how to learn new things, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Um, and so this has been awesome to just learn a new trial by fire, you know, learn a new thing as we're doing it. And, um, it's crazy how little we knew, uh, the very first time we were in public selling cheeseburgers to people and, uh, how much more we know now. And we're still learning daily, you know, like now we're at a spot where we're like really trying to figure out growth, like trajectory for our business makes a lot of sense to be in a, a brick and mortar shop at some point. Um, it makes a lot of sense for us to have employees underneath our belts now. Um, but we're, you know, we've been holding our finances so close to try to be really smart and not like burn through a lot of money so we can, um, make smart financial decisions. Um, and now we're getting to the point where we're like, okay, we are having conversations about actually bringing on employees. Cause this entire time it's just been Cody and I, and every once in a while we, you know, we'll farm out some work to people like, Hey, please come work this shift with us. Cause it's going to be crazy. But we haven't had any actual like full or part-time employees yet. Um, but that's something that, cause uh, the one thing that a lot of people have been telling us for a long time and we haven't like we haven't taken it too serious until now is like if we're in the truck and we're standing over the griddle and we're staring at the patties as we're smashing them, you can't see the entire business if you're standing right there doing the work for the business. Yeah, ever. And like all we're all we're caring i don't want to say all we care about because we care we there's a whole another side to like there's there's a very existential joy about physically making a delicious cheeseburger and watching someone eat it and uh and seeing the smile on their face and knowing that you're nourishing their their soul and their body and and their and their happy times with their friends and stuff like that's a whole another thing but like um, you know, I've made thousands and thousands and thousands of those interactions and in cheeseburgers. And now I'm trying to figure out how to have more and more and more be made. So I need to figure out how to get somebody else to make those cheeseburgers so that I can pay attention to growth and, um, scale. And that's, that's where Cody and I's mind are right now is trying to figure out how to make the smartest business decisions we can to keep this thing growing. Cause, um, we want to be good stewards of the thing that we've you could either say been given or worked for a little bit of both you know um so that's where we're at right now man we got a lot of big plans um that we're in the middle of trying to figure out what those plans are and follow them because this didn't start with a business plan we didn't sit down and go hey let's make this business we're just trying to catch the business that we started And so what would you say is the greatest thing about your partnership? Like what is the thing that you guys do the best and like brings you guys the best results? Like as you and Cody, like how do you compliment her? What skills does he have that you don't and what skills that you have? Because you guys obviously work together. So let's talk about like the business partnership. You guys were in a band, so you understand what it's like to orchestrate. It's like being on a team if you're an athlete. But let's talk about what that looks like and how – this business relationship, it sort of sprouted, but you guys obviously complement each other well. So who does what, how does that look and how do you resolve conflict if there's any conflict? Man. Uh, I, yeah, d dude, Cody is a perfect partner for me and I think I'm a perfect partner for Cody. Um, Cody shines on so many levels that I don't, he's very analytical. He thinks about, um, you know, the, the logistical side of things, the financial side of things, he's very much the, the day to day spreadsheet guy, you know, like we have, we have so many Google sheets and Cody is so good at formulas. And like, we have so many built on calculators that like, 
if you know with our p and l's and keeping our um you know we know down to the cent how much profit we've made from every service and every week and every month and every year and where money's going and uh he's just so good at that stuff um he's good at thinking about uh like i don't like this week we're we're gonna try a new thing in our service that we haven't tried like on a on a um you know like a logistical uh what's the word i'm looking for like um he's just very methodical about thinking about processes that's a good word and so we have a lot of like dialed in processes due to cody's brain and he's so good at that stuff um i really excel on i I guess i'm a pretty creative person i'm very outgoing um i it's funny to say this as a 41 year old man but like i love the internet um like i love that what it can do it can bring uh, a community of people together you can reach people that you would have never been able to reach i grew up in a world without computers when i was in school you know like the way i started getting music and learning about music was through uh mailing people cash money and then sending you cds or tapes or like fanzines and the way you learn about everything going on all over the world is through like copy you know copy papered like little crappy magazines that punk rock kids were putting out right and where we're at today you can learn about anything from anybody from anywhere at any moment because you got this computer in your phone in your in your pocket you know (coughs) (coughs) sorry and like that i think it's beautiful and i think that's cool that like i can just whether it's a a really well thought out produced piece of content or just me picking up my phone and within two seconds blabbing to people off the top of my brain we can get any message out that we want at any time to anybody and um i love it and what's so important about what we're doing with uh the burger club is it's not just a cheeseburger it's like we're trying to build a community of people that when you come stand in line you want to make friends with the person next to you like that we get we've gotten messages from people that are like yo i met my uh partner at your line i was standing in line met this girl now we've been dating for over a year like and those kind of things are like really important to me and those are the things that drive, like the existential is what drives me more than the money. Of course, I got to pay my bills and like, I'm trying to like be set up to like make financial smart decisions for my life. But like that existential stuff is what drives me. So like, I think, you know, my outgoingness of talking to people and like really being crazy on the internet. And in the very beginning, every single post we put out, I would like me or Cody would be sending messages, text back to each other saying, Hey, is it okay to post this? Hey, is it okay to post this? And then eventually Cody just said, dude, whatever you're doing on the internet works. So just do it. And so like that, and I feel the same way about like him thinking about processes and thinking about the financials and stuff. And, you know, like neither one of us are going out and making crazy financial decisions without the other, but like, um, we just both have like our strong points and, and Cody is very uh, driven on the business side of things and makes really smart decisions. And I kind of get to just be crazy and goofy on the marketing. And I'm also like Cody always um, tells me how crafty I am or whatever. Cause like, I'm always just thinking, I think about a lot of stuff on the truck, you know, like how do we do this thing on this truck to make this thing, uh you know move better like the other day i made this shelf that like made our life better and like just stuff like that because i'm very like uh tradesman kind of jack of all trades um so we just get in where we fit in man i don't know like i can it, relate it, to you a lot andy i play a lot of the similar role i'm the very energetic one i build relationships i have a lot of positivity like i can uplift someone very quickly like last night i was walking down broadway and like guy wanted to sell me roses well i don't have anyone to give them to but i can tell he needs the money so i'm like okay here's six bucks dude like go get warm 
like it's freaking cold out here like whatever you need to do like like let's figure this out but you don't need to sell me any roses and um and it's that type of thing like i feel the energy i'm very creative i um I like the crafty term. I grew up on a farm, so everything, you couldn't throw money at everything because you had animals to feed. Like, making sure they didn't die was more important whether you spent $1,000 on a fence post. So you had to figure out things, right? And so, and same in business, especially in food. Like, everything's always crafty. Even, like, when we were doing, you know, hundreds of thousands of meals a day at food service partners we still were having to be wise and crafty with the way we did everything it's just part of being a business person so if you don't have that um it's good i also like processes and procedures um but in my life i went from a process procedure driven entrepreneur to like a creative visionary entrepreneur i think it's just an age driven thing like and certain powers get turned on as well that depending on who your business partners are or who the relationships are um, is how that happens. Now I'm like both sides, like trying to, to do both. And I agree with you on the internet. I just want to talk about that. Like what I had to do 25 years ago to run a corporate office to what I do now, like just like the sheer skill of just touching buttons and almost having zero humans like in my life just because I can do it all here and I have to deal with people, don't get me wrong. But the difference is exponential. And it's no different than why a a tent with a griddle could start getting more Instagram than a burger joint that's been around for 30 years is because this crafty creativity. And it's always good to have someone come from the outside into a business, okay? It's also important. And it's also important for everyone to learn and grow, just like Andy said. Like, you need to expose yourself to other entrepreneurs in your community through podcasts, through whatever. And I agree with Andy. I've always been a lifetime learner like for some reason at 20 years old it would just stuck I don't I just start reading everyday growth books I don't know it just and then forever it, it's just been that way I don't miss a day and um and I do I'm like I'm into like using the internet to to connect with people and gain knowledge when I need it and if I have a question I'm like oh I wonder how blah 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 made their money oh let me figure this out because that intrigues me because other people take their path and they stay true to themselves so that's also why I do the podcast because we're talking about real entrepreneurs that aren't entrepreneurs because something was given to them or because they just got a lump sum of money and they grew a business. That's not what happened here. That's not the podcast we have on this show. Okay. So what Andy's done and what Cody's done and what they've done before and what came together is because a lifetime of experiences and stacking up losses that ultimately lead to wins because they gained experience okay there's a lot of wins in there too but they came at the cost of losing I can't just all of a sudden run on a soccer field and win it's impossible I have to go train I have to get knocked down a few times maybe break a bone or two and it's just the way it is and so and it's the same for musicians and it's the same for farming and it's the same for entrepreneurism you're going to get knocked down it's just matter whether or not the decision to be an entrepreneur is not whether or not I'm going to make it or I'm going to make money. You don't know. The thing is, is do you love it enough chasing your dreams and pursuing the happiness or joy that you want in your life or for your family and the independence and freedom that it brings and the influence and impact it brings to other people? You heard how much influence Andy has had and people have impacted him. So that's what it's about. Are you willing to give on? And entrepreneurism, I'm sorry, guys, like you're a different breed in today's world. You let go of the instant gratification. Everything is very long term, especially 100 years out even if the entrepreneurs are really starting to tune into energy and the growing of the environment and the humans around them, especially understanding that everyone you employ or you build into your business, you're supporting their dreams and their children's dreams and their grandchildren's dreams. You're building legacy. And every time you talk to them or or pay them or around them, you have a chance to not only impact them financially by putting whatever it is and giving them that, but you can instill in them good entrepreneur values that are important for your business to do well, but it's also important for the humans to do well. And so I love that you're doing that, Andy, and I feel like your life experience and your energy is just so in tune with that. And I like heavy metal and that kind of music too. I have like a 
weird love for the the metal scream it's just like one of those things that i'm just like it's so incredible like a human can do that and um so i just think you're such an incredible human and it really is about you guys having all these superpowers that you developed and harnessed some born some developed some born and then developed and doing what you guys are doing so tell me i'll I'll let you keep going if you want to keep going on that that note but i also wanted to talk about the food and the type of burgers you guys serve and stuff like that as well because you know i don't want to not talk about the food it is 10 percent of it and getting it right was part of it so i want everyone to have a chance to where they can find you guys like what the food's about um can they come say hello to you and you and Cody while you guys are in the truck? I think that's important that they they meet you guys, but that's up to you guys. And um, and I'll give you the mic back. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. I mean, as far as what we're serving, it's it's really simple food, man. Uh, like like I said, Cody and I didn't come from the industry and haven't grown up working through kitchens uh cody is quite a bit more culinary skilled than i am actually he makes a lot of really great stuff at home and is a a fantastic home cook um but you know our burger is very simple it started like the very first free um you know thing that we did in his front yard we bought all this stuff from kroger you know like like we are selling you a cheeseburger that you can make at home. The difference between like what we're doing and what you're doing at home is maybe just a lot of care and concern about the craft and paying a lot of attention to every detail. Like our sauce is a very simple, delicious burger sauce. And like we, we started with a version of it. Then we seriously probably made I don't know, 20 different versions of our burger sauce with different ratios of the same ingredients and added ingredients and subtract ingredients and finally landed on a very, very, very similar sauce to what we started with. And, um, you know, we played with other cheese, but always came back to the fact that American cheese slices melt and taste the best on a cheeseburger but then i agree are, with that i agree I there's agree. and then there are so many different brands of american cheese yeah. and you know we started with craft because that's what you can get at the store and it's the best but then like once you get into um you know mass producing cheeseburgers and you can't get craft at a cheaper wholesale price than you can get other cheeses we went through you know, 10 different brands of American cheese to try to find what we think is the best, uh, you know, mirror image to a craft single, you know, and th- we do the same thing with the buns. And like, so everything that we serve you, it, like what we're known for, like our signature standout burger, you're always going to get this burger. And most, I'd say most services, we only just have this one cheeseburger on the menu. And then sometimes we run stand or specials, but like our bad luck burger is double meat, double cheese, grilled onions, pickles, and our special sauce on a potato roll. And all of that is very, very simple, but we spent so much time, um, you know, even on our seasoning that we season the meat with, it's like seasoning that you got in your kitchen cabinet, but we like dialed in what we think the ratios need to be and stuff like that. And it's all just like, it literally is just me and Cody making the cheeseburger that we want to eat. And then all of our friends wanted to eat it. And like, if you just make a simple thing that tastes really good, has all the right textures. Um, and then, you know, care about it, care about the product that you're serving and care about the person that's buying the product. And I think that part is really big for us on like, we we truly care about the people that are coming out and we we've tried so hard to keep our burger prices at a low price point you know like i mean you gotta have your margins gotta make sense and like 
we're riding the line of our margins not making sense a lot of times. Um, and that, you know, that's a the thing that as we scale and we grow that we're going to have to turn loose of a little bit. But like, I want, we serve a lot in like East Nashville and there's a lot of cool Trinity kids that eat in East Nashville, but there's also people that have been living in East Nashville for 20, 30, 40 years that are on lower level income. And I don't want to have to charge them $13 for a cheeseburger in their neighborhood. I love, I 100% agree with that. Anyway, go on. I just wanted to say, I agree with you. I think that it becomes to a point where it starts getting outrageous for the consumer. Yeah. Go on. And so, you know, I want, I want the man and woman and family that's been living in this neighborhood for forever to be able to afford our food. And I want the college kid to be able to afford our food. And I want the cool new hot chef in town to come eat our cheeseburger and go, man, that's a great cheeseburger. You got them selling it at a really low price point. Like, you know, we're, we're trying to make everybody happy as well as make our wives happy and pay our bills, you know, and there's, there's a fine line that you got to ride with all of that. But, um, you know, and at some point after this podcast, our burger won't be $8. One day it's going to be $9. You know, that, that, that's how uh, the industry works and inflation and the world. And I hate that, but like, it, it's just a part of it. But we have always tried to, like when we started, our burger was $7. Because when we first started, our margins made sense at $7. And then we were like, we were upside down on the margin and like really like, you know, basically losing money. And so we had to go to $8. And so like, but for us, we, we only want to raise those prices when um, it makes sense for the consumer as well. You know, so like what other value are you going to get if you've been paying you know, $8 for this burger for so long. And then we eventually have to move up to a higher price point. What other value are we going to add to your experience than just, you know, you getting the same exact cheeseburger for a higher price? And I don't know the answer to that question, but that's the answer that we're, that's the question we're always asking ourselves, you know? And so maybe that burger price hike goes when we move into a brick and mortar. I don't know. Um, I'm getting long winded on money, but like, um, you know, our goal is to make a a delicious, simple burger that people like, and they want to keep returning for. And, uh, you know, a whole side note of all of it is the club. Like we really care about the people that are coming out. We've made so many friends and like know people's names. And like, we have a kid, Ed. I don't want to call him a kid. He's like in his late twenties um, that comes and works on the truck with us sometimes. And that's, we only know him because he came and started buying cheeseburgers. And in our first year of business, you can see on square who your number one customer was. And it was Ed. Ed came so much and bought so many cheeseburgers that we have a real friendship with him. He is in my phone. We text and talk to each other. And like now he comes and works on the truck with us. And there are so many people like that in my life now, like from two years ago to now, I have so many friends that solely just came into my life because we started making cheeseburgers in my backyard. You know what I mean? Um, So much that when I agree so much when you do the right thing, the right people come into your life and you build these crazy relationships when your life sort of all of a sudden comes together in the right way, if you will. And it's not that it's not a struggle, guys. I'm not going to paint. It's not butterflies and rainbows. It's struggle. You have to figure out money. You have to figure out stress and family stuff that go on with your life, sometimes crazy hours. But what I do love about this is your ability to go out and realize how important your clients are or your customers and build a relation with them and respond and communicate with them. And it's so interesting because we live in this world of Instagram and Facebook and TikTok where everyone wants everyone to focus so much on them that they actually never communicate back. Like tons of people are trying to communicate with them. Like, oh my God, all these people, I can't believe it. Look how famous I am. I'm whatever. What am I going to do with this? But the people that or the humans that actually start engaging, that's often the difference in 10,000 to 40,000 likes. 
like if you already have a superpower. That's just not my my thing, so I don't have that. But when you're a musician or you have a burger or you have something that really goes well and you're able to turn up the volume and understand how to connect with the people or already have the connections, like number one, did everyone hear that the day one they just texted everyone and told them to come over and just take photos of the burgers they were doing? They use connections and relationships that they build. It's why it's so important, but we don't build them anymore. So I, I want to emphasize that. The other thing I want to talk about um, is what do you think is the skills? Like if you could name three to five skills or qualities that have really made it so you're, you've been successful as an entrepreneur, whether you gained them in music, whether you gained them in the after music life, whatever, um, and the side gigs thing that we talked about or side hustle that I think that I call it. Um, I mean, where, what are those skills and, and how have they played out right now? Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll start first on the business and financial side that, uh, from day one, you know, being like a, you know, 15, 16, 17 year old kid that starts playing bands. And, um, it's, it's such a small grassroots business. You're starting with, you know, a lot of times you're starting without any like, uh, parent parental like support. Cause they don't like heavy metal and like, you know, whatever, but like, whatever your story is, you start this band and you don't have any money and you don't have any support and you got to learn how to make every dollar stretch. So like when your band starts uh, making $50 at, from playing a show, you're like, you, you could all go eat Taco Bell or you could take that $50 and you put it in your little lot box and then you wait till you make another 50 and another 50 and another 50 and you start like gaining some money and then you go buy some t-shirts and then you sell t-shirts and then you keep saving that money. That's how my life always was. And, the, and all the bands I was ever in, you learn how to make your dollar stretch. So we learned how to run successful, profitable uh, businesses out of those little punk rock bands by being smart with our money. Both Cody and I will say the same thing about that life. So like everything that we know about how to be businessmen right now is from being, you know, snot nosed little punk kids that are trying to make it to the next step. And so we, we have a lot of knowledge in how to stretch money and be smart with money because we, we started with not much money in both of our lives. Um, so I'd say that on a, on a business level is trying to figure out how to go as far as you can with as little as you can. Um, and then, uh, you know, transferring out of music into what we do now, like artistic and creative wise um you know as being in a band uh you're trying to figure out any way to connect to your audience uh both on and off stage uh when our band started getting uh big and or bigger and more successful that's when like myspace was taking off and then facebook and like you utilize uh those tools that are there for you to use and you figure out how to connect with people and uh you know you kind of brought it up a second ago and i'll expound on uh the internet it's not just a look at me look at me look at me look at me or like please buy this come buy this come buy this you gotta use that as a way to actually grow real connection personal connection with people whether through a business or through your personal accounts Like I on every, uh, you know, I I have multiple like kind of successful accounts on the internet or personal, I got a YouTube channel, I got uh, the Bad Luck Bird Club profile, like all these different things that have, uh, have garnered a little bit of success and have, have some following. And it's not because I'm only just saying, hey, look at me, buy my t-shirt or whatever. It's me talking to every single person that reaches out to me with questions or just like, Hey, I like your, you know, you look cool or I like your burger or I like this shirt. Like everybody is looking for connection and a response. And at one point there might be a time in my life where there's just too much to handle to be able to reply back to everybody. Um, but I hope that never happens. Cause the, what's the point for me, the point is connection. So 
I reply to every single comment, every single message, even if it's like they send a heart eyes emoji, I send back a thumbs up emoji, you know, like just to let that person know they're seen. And then we have we have so many people. I do the same thing. Text, Instagram, Facebook. I am literally I try to communicate back with every single person, even if it's just a thumbs up or like awesome keep kicking butt every day like tr- something that i give something back because like i just feel like it's wrong for me it's a take thing like i feel like i'm taking something and not giving something back because these people are giving love or have questions or even if it's not in a great way sometimes i try to at least address it because i'm like oh, let's be real about this let's talk about it so you know and right. it's up to them whether they accept it or not and it's um it's really cool that you do that because I don't think there's enough of that in the world. I almost wonder if it's a generational thing, but I don't know yet um, because I've met some pretty young entrepreneurs recently that are really good at communicating. I'm so impressed. Um, but again, go on, Andy. I just wanted to say that I think it's so important that you say that. Well, the thing to think about too is like we have this, and this is probably an older generational gap is like, we think of real life and then internet. There's real life and then there's the internet. Dude, the internet is fucking real life. It's like, it's just an extension of <laughs> Absolutely. our everyday life. Yep. And so like if me and you are standing in a parking lot or a room together and you say something to me and I don't reply to you, what's that going to make you feel like? It's exactly. going to make you feel like less than. I so love it. Why, it's, I agree with you 100% internet is just an extension of that real life conversation i owe you a response you know and at some point that it's just like in when you're texting to somebody eventually conversations got to trail off somehow but like you know it's just that's the way i treat the internet and um i'm not attributing no but i will cause growth to me but like that's yeah. what i care about is making sure every single person's feel seen and heard and so i i spend a lot of time on the internet talking to people and anybody that's listening right now like yes you got to pay your bills at the end of the day that's why we're all doing this but like every single post that you put on the internet shouldn't be about your your 9.99 price point on this whatever your t-shirt your burger whatever like not every single post on the internet is about selling something it is about connecting and building a broader audience um, to get more people engaged in what you're doing. We put out a lot of just silly stuff of like me or Cody or both of us being goofy. I gave him a, a breakfast sandwich one day from somebody else, Fat Belly Pretzel, a spot in town that we love. I gave Cody a sandwich one morning. And I posted it and made an edit and put it on the internet. It had zero to do with us selling cheeseburgers, but it was a funny, creative little moment between me and Cody. And everybody gets to see that me and Cody are friends. And that I gave him a, a sandwich for breakfast, and it got so much engagement because it's just two friends being real on the internet, being goofy and yeah. having fun, and people want that connection. And I met someone here in um, in Nashville, and like we we recently had this very same conversation. Is it's being genuine? There's like people know when you're being genuine. It goes back to that law of attraction thing. Like over time, the more genuine you are, and the more realistic you are, and the more real you are, and you don't you're not coding people's feelings. You're not trying to do whatever. You're just trying to be a real human, like in the real world and deal with real life and, and grow people and, and positivity and and do something with your life. I think that that's hugely important. So I'm going to ask you this real quick, Andy, like, how do you, like, you obviously put a lot of energy and good things when you're communicating with everyone. Like, How do you motivate yourself every morning? Like, is there some way you inspire yourself to make sure that you keep giving as much as you give? Because I'm going to say this. um, When you do what you're doing, it's often more of a give than you receive back. But you, from, I'll let you answer the question first and then I'll give my two cents. Go ahead, um, Andy. 
Uh, all I know, the best way I can just dissect it is this. Like, I grew up real poor, like poverty poor, trailer park, white trash, fat kid. Didn't have a lot of friends, like, in the early years of life. And then somehow in my teens, um, like, worked through all the shame and self-esteem issues to just being like, I want to give to the world what I haven't been giving or haven't been getting, which is love and acceptance and positivity. And we, so like we're the same a lot in that way. Go ahead. I love this. God. Go ahead. So like, you know, somehow in my teenage years, I was like, okay, I'm going to love everybody. I'm going to accept everybody. And I'm going to try to bring people joy daily. And so like, that was my, you know, that was my personality in school. That was my personality on stage being in a band. I toured the whole world being that person. Yeah, I have a tattoo um, on my hand of a, a honeybee, and it's exactly that. It's like my whole, like, being born an entrepreneur and born who I am. I was born to, like, pollinate the world positively. Like, I don't know nice. if that, that lasts for generations. Like, legacy, like, the way my mind works, I can, like, take, like, big picture things and really micro them down and... But anyway, go ahead. I just think that's exactly true. Like that is the purpose that we should have. But go ahead, um, Andy. I like this spreading love and, and joy. That's cool, dude. I like that pollination uh, reference. That's cool. Um, yeah, dude. So like, I did that, and and then honestly, like, um, after our our band ended, like in my like early thirties. And then I went through, uh, you know, about a decade of just like working jobs and trying to figure out my life. And, you know, I also got, uh, you know, I got personal battles uh, where, you know, I've lost both my parents to drugs and suicide. And like, so there was like this stint in my life where things got really dark. I'm working jobs that I don't care about. I'm dealing with the the internal struggle of, of you know, what I just mentioned with my parents and um, I, I become like a very negative, dark person, the exact opposite of like the person that Rachel, uh, fell in love with and knew the exact opposite of, of the guy that all the dudes in my band, uh, grew to love and know. And so like, um, I, I became like a pretty negative person for years and, um, then one day it just clicked and like I realized it and I saw it and like saw it within myself to be like holy crap I can either live the rest of my life in cynicism and be this person to everybody and probably push all the people that I love away or I can figure out to be how to be the person that I was you know before and then every day since that realization has just been a practice in being present um and ex not only accepting but enjoying every moment of what life you know brings me and so like i daily work on like this conversation with you right now on the phone we've been, i don't know we've been talking for an hour or two i don't i don't know I'm, I'm like immersed in it Absolutely. and it really matters to me. And like, I have a lot of stuff to do today, but I'm not like, I'm not there in my head. And that's where I used to be during those dark times. I was always thinking about the next thing. How do I get out of this conversation? How do I get out of the day? How do I get out of work so I can go home and sit on my couch, you know? And like, my mind isn't there anymore. It's all about being present in whatever I'm doing. And people you, I think being present gets thrown around a lot and people talk about it and like, don't pull out your phone and don't be looking at your phone. Be present. I think it means way more than that, man. It's like, if you are looking at your phone, have a purpose on why you're on your phone. Like, are you giving yourself a certain amount of time to like, look at things that you enjoy and, and, uh, and get some, you know, entertainment for me, I'm, that's not me anymore. I'm only on my phone for, for, for the connection with people and business but like it is it is purposeful while i while i'm on my phone i'm not doom scrolling anymore 
I'm purposely on that phone to do whatever it is that I need to do. And I don't, anyway, I'm getting off on. I've done today. a little doom scrolling myself. I have to, I've been in a dark place or two myself, uh, over the years. And I know exactly what you're talking about. You, um, you almost stop believing in the goodness around the world. And then something dark comes into your soul because you believe in the light and goodness so bad that it's hard. Like, how is this happening? At least that's what it was for me. So I get that a lot. And I also think that um, that um, you need those times in life to reset. And whatever that looks like, sometimes it's a total transformation. Uh, sometimes it's just getting back in balance. So um, keep going, Andy. I like where the conversation's going. And I agree with you. It's more presence is with purpose. Like if I go on my phone now, I'm really purpose. Okay. Like this is what I'm doing on it. What does it have to do with work? What does it have to do with the podcast? What does it have to do with my social life? Like I'm very intentional with my time. When am I exercising? (laughs) Like I am, it's kind of crazy, but weirdly it gives me so much freedom because I don't have to worry about stuff and I don't have all the mental baggage that comes along with zigzagging my way through life or what you were saying, like trying to, when is my next thing? Like I'm so organized, but I also have all this free time because I purposely put it there and, um, to find it. And I say that and everyone's like, Oh, how much free time? I'm talking like it stacks up to maybe like 10 hours a week. Okay. At most, but maybe I doubt it, but you know, free time to me is, I'm not watching TV though. I'm actually free. That's funny. Free time to me is where I'm investing in my future in something other than that's making me money. I don't know how to put it that way, whether it's friendships or whether it's a person I'm interested in or it's, um, or whatever I don't, or new business like that's generally the way free time works for Justin. It's where I get to be freely myself and turn up the volume of the things that I want to do um, for my life. And so I guess that that's how I look at it. And if I sit behind TVs or do whatever, like you said, and I've been in that cycle or Netflix cycle or whatever, you know, got to watch all 20 episodes in three days. And um, it just doesn't go anywhere. And it doesn't create distance. And it certainly doesn't attract people to your business or what you're doing. And I think that that's spot on um, to what you're saying. So as you cycle out of this, like what happens, like what happens in your life as you cycle out of this, what happens to your relationships? Man, once I realized like my negativity was taking hold and I started practicing like, you know, being present, I, I really think I can attribute like my positivity to being present in, in, in every moment. And, um, so I had a really stressful job before all this, all, you know, the world went to shit and all this happened. And that's when I realized like I'm out of it and always thinking about that job and not enjoying that like friendship time and time with my wife. And I'm always thinking about that thing. So for me, it's being present, thinking about what's happening at the moment, being fully invested in what's happening at the moment. And so now I live in this world and like, say that everything that I do is the most healthy healthy way of thinking like uh, like Cody my partner and Rachel like call me out and think I'm crazy for some of the shit I say but like at this point this is how I live my life and it works that like um the 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 days where we're really really in the weeds and we're in the thick of it and like we're smashing hundreds of burger patties and like the line is you know, a hundred deep and the bun toaster acts up on us or whatever. And we're really having a hard time for me. The, the mindset that I try to live in is that moment that we're in right there is just as precious and amazing and important as me and my wife riding motorcycles together or sitting on the couch and watching Netflix or going out to dinner. Like, And she can maybe find that a little bit as a slap in the face or like Cody thinks that I'm crazy when I say that, because he's like, I enjoy my time with my wife so much more than I enjoy the time making cheeseburgers with you in this truck. And I respect that. But for me, the way that I want to live my life for the rest of my life is that every moment that I'm in is the only moment that matters because 
we're gonna fucking die, dude. We're gonna be gone. Absolutely. Like, I'm fat. I'm 300 pounds. I got high blood pressure, and that's that's a whole another podcast we can talk about that I'm working on. But with that being said, checked out sooner than you because you're an active soccer loving, basketball loving, sports guy. Yeah. So if that's the case, and that there's a, you know no matter what, we're all even. So, like, I've spent enough time in sorrow in my life and negativity that I'm really trying to make every second and every moment, like, really important and beautiful to me. And hopefully that gives me the attitude and the outward, you know, momentum to give that same exact moment to you or to whoever I'm talking to or around at the time, you know? And so that circles all the way back to you asked earlier, like, can people from your podcast come and talk to us at the truck? Heck yeah, man. I mean, like we, if we be self-aware, if we got a line of a hundred plus people, I'm not only be able to be like, yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? You know, but like, heck yeah, man, if we're, if we're chill and I'm not dying over a, a griddle, I'm down to make uh, experiences with people and, and talk to people and like at the very least you know send me a message on Instagram we'll go get a coffee or something um, but that's I, I don't know if that answers your your questions but that's my outlook on life is I'm trying to figure out how to be positive in every moment so that I can be positive for others but I will say also that I understand that this mindset can be a little unhealthy and it's a thing that I have to work on because I was this person once in life and and I fell from it. Oh gosh, my phone is talking to me, sorry. Um I was this person in life once before and I gave way too much of myself and kind of lost a little bit of me and had to find myself again. Yeah. I've um, been there. But like also in that like my band um, I, you know you have to be like you, your followers and your uh, fans see you as a certain thing and then you have to be that thing for them all the time and they see you out in public and and you have to put on that appearance of being that person they want you to be the thing that I'm trying to do this time around is be me fully you know, so like what that means is like I have a pretty hard time with like my mouth and not cussing and like but that's for me yeah, me too. trying to be like a positive role model and not say the F word on stage, you know? Yeah. And so now I'm right like, there with you. So like I am me to a fault that you know, exactly. I, like if if I am having a bad day, I'm gonna try to let you know I'm having a bad day instead of lying about it but let you know that like it's something that I'm working through and that we can talk, you know, the following day and it's probably going to be tight, you know? I 100% agree with that all the way. And the other thing that I really agree with is that being me now thing. I spent a, like multiple decades, like trying to be this person that everyone wanted me to be for the company or for um, the family or for the relationships I was in. And at the end, there was such a darkness that happened like to me and to my soul, and I lost myself completely. And one of the reasons is I gave so much of myself away that I lost a lot of myself, okay? I lost a lot of what I wanted. I lost a lot of what I wanted for my dreams. I lost what my financial goals were. I lost what I wanted my life to look like. And and it's hard, and I really want entrepreneurs to talk like this is something because 25 years down the road, I'm talking about this, is if you don't balance this out, it's really bad for your business. And if you have business partners that they aren't balancing it out, like this weird Napoleonic thing happens where they go from wanting to help everyone to wanting to be a dictator and tell everyone what to do. And I don't know why it happens, but it stems around this thing that we're talking about. So... While I'm not a therapist or a psychologist, I grow humans and I've been around enough humans to know that we as humans, a lot of humans actually get into this stage and never get out. 
Okay, it becomes their life stage, and whether they still go to work, they become functioning. I don't even know what call it, melodramatics. I don't know what else the word would be. It's probably not the right word. Someone will correct me. But it's like we're we're emotionally depressed or su- suppressing ourselves um, because we're in these negative loops. And gosh, it rotted me. It's hard as an entrepreneur, but I'm a different person now. And I've grown so much because I realized it was happening. I had a moment like Andy. But if you don't do it and you don't, really make an active change and change it immediately it only gets worse and the damage it does to your life just gets way worse and so I like that you talked about that Andy one of the things that I think that you talked about earlier that I wanted to go back on is you sort of create multiple days in one like you have your business you're in the business but you're also working on the business when you were in the band you had multiple job functions you were also working a job multiple jobs and trying to start a burger club so you divide your time out really well. And we were talking about um, being inspired and, and, and being intentional and, and finding time. So let's a little bit touch on this. How do you manage your time to communicate with everyone and, and be positive, but also manage your business? I mean, I think it's a majority of you see managing people as doing your business or as who you are or what your purpose is in life. But I I just want to understand how you manage your days as a business because everyone's like, oh my gosh, I hadn't. How do you guys do it all the time as entrepreneurs? I can't even manage my day. But like, instead of me talking about it because I'm super disciplined, I think you're a guy who's who's got it together. You're spreading joy in the world because everyone's like, oh, I don't have time to like talk to everyone and build my business. You know, I get that one a lot. And so, like, let's talk about it. How do you do it? Um. I think first it's mindset. I mean, it's like all the, you know, the burger club and all these various little things I still have going on outside of the burger club. Like I enjoy it because it's something that is mine and like I'm getting to be creative and grow this thing that's mine. So I actually enjoy all the, all the different work that's involved in doing it. I mean, sometimes you got to like, you got to go like clean the truck out and that's not enjoyable to like scrub a bunch of grease, but you're with a mindset that you are bettering the business and moving it forward. If, if, if you're thinking through that lens, then it's more enjoyable because you're seeing, you're going to see the outcome of what's happening from scrubbing that grease. But um, as far as time management, like it is hard and I'm actually trying to work more on like, schedules in place in my life to like um have things a little more dialed in because i kind of don't i don't really have a good like uh work slash uh personal life balance or whatever that people talk about a lot (laughs) because i enjoy the work part so much like Uh, yeah exactly my wife kind of has to like remind me to shut off sometimes because i you know i enjoy it and i want to keep working at it it's not like a stressful thing it's like i I have this open time. I could be spending doing this. Um, but you know, just a little bit of stuff is like, um, as far as how to reply back to everybody all the time, I kind of have like a weird little, I won't say it's actually OCD, but the way I think (laughs) about it's like, I, I have all the push notifications on my phone and like, um, you know, soon as I see a comment, soon as I see a message, soon as I see something, I try to just go straight and reply right then if I have the information to do that. Um, instead of putting it off, um, yeah, like too. I have some, like I have a YouTube channel that's completely unrelated to burgers, but it's a, like a passive income and I put some videos up from time to time. And like those, like I, I answers all those qu- comments on Monday. Cause that that's the day that, that I have to a lot towards that, that time and that business. But like, you know, speaking about burger club, like soon as something pops in, I'll, I'll pop an answer right back or reply. And if it's something regarding a date or a calendar or like, Hey, can you guys come on February 17th of 2023? I can't, I, I save it and I put it and, you know, I flag it and I say, okay, I'm going to reply to this later. And then I have a certain part of my day every single day where I sit down at my computer and I go, okay, there's three or four or five un 
emails and 10 unanswered Instagram messages. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to knock all those out right now. Um, and it's just like, all it's about allotting time to be able to do that. And people like get really stressed about that thing, like the com- communication stuff. But it, I mean, in the end, it, you're take, it takes you like 10 minutes to go through and knock out 10 emails. You know, like it's not, it's seriously like about a minute in the email to like give people the answer they want. Um, it and is. then, you know, like Mondays are a day that we like Mondays are our big behind the scenes days where this is where we order all of our food for the week. And we, uh, get all our projections for how many burgers we're going to sell at each, uh, service. Cody does all the books on Mondays. You know, we do our payouts on Monday. We pay all our bills on Monday. Um, and then Tuesdays, usually services start again. So Tuesday we get together and we clean the truck from the previous week and we prep the truck and we start prepping food for that service. And it's just all about allotting the right time for the right things. Um, you know, as far as the actual like nitty gritty of prepping food and, stuff like that like the physical aspect of those things it's kind of just day of you know you prep the food uh an hour before the service you show up on site you sell stuff you clean stuff um that kind of just the actual the actual making cheeseburgers and selling cheeseburgers that's kind of just like it's physical work you got to do but it's kind of just like you know it runs itself you just do what has to be done you know, it's not even a lot of thought process on that anymore. It's just like, oh, you know, you're we're going to sell 150 cheeseburgers at this place because we sold 150 cheeseburgers at the same as that place last week. So we bring 150 cheeseburgers, maybe 10 more, hoping that we're going to keep growing every time. Um, I don't know. Does that, answer, does that answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. And so as we start to wrap things up, Andy, uh-huh. uh, yeah, as we start to wrap things up, Andy, um, like, what is it, like, I'm going to give you the mic. I, if you could go back, you know, to your previous self, or if you could go share anything with any entrepreneurs or musicians that are starting off in the world and and just struggling or in the negative cycle loop that you were in, and I'm going to give you as much time as you want because we still have some time left, but I I really think that you have a strong message, and I think if you could just tell everyone, like, what would you do, like, what have you learned um you know, and give hope. Really, I think that that's really the most important thing in positivity for a better future. If you could go back and tell yourself something, what would it be? Oh, that's heavy. There's a lot, man. I guess you know, a lot of different ways to look about life and about how you afford financially to live your life. There are a lot of really desirable jobs in the world that have to be done. Not every single person is going to be an entrepreneur and work for themselves. It just can't be that. Like people have to work for waste management and come pick up my trash every Monday morning. Um, And so there are some people that like, I don't want to say are born to do that job, but they're like, they're your life, your life, your being, your existence is not defined how you pay your bills. Um, so if you can be happy working whatever job, whether that's a data analyst, a coder, or a guy that cleans the toilets at the Bridgestone Arena, like as long as you're happy in your day-to-day life with your family or your video games or your dog or whatever the life is that you want to live, Hopefully you're just making enough money to afford the life that you care to live because we're not going to be here long enough to like be bummed and be sad. So like uh, I spent enough time being bummed and sad that I don't want to be that way anymore. And so like one, I've had to realize that the way I pay my rent doesn't have to be tied to my identity. And I spent a lot of years doing a lot of jobs that like I didn't really care about. And I was unhappy at the time. But I think it wasn't because I was not fulfilling my dream of being an entrepreneur or whatever. It's because that I wasn't being present in the moment 
and realizing that, hey, this job that I'm doing that I don't really care that much about, it is affording me an amazing, beautiful life with a beautiful wife and to be able to do all the things that I want to do outside of work. And I just had a, I had the wrong mindset. So I think it's like prioritizing what your wants and your needs out of life are, figuring out how to afford those things and, and, and being okay with whatever that means. If you have to get a second job and, uh, you know, work retail at Walmart, and that's not something you really enjoy doing, but you really want to try to, uh, better your life and make X amount of money or buy whatever. Like, it's just all about managing the expectations that you have in your life and working towards things and trying to be as present and, and as positive as possible during that process. I just like, am lucky that right about the same time that I was work, I was already trying to figure this out in my life like the, the, the positivity, uh, presentness, like that stuff I was working on before this burger club thing even happened. It's not like I just started doing this entrepreneur thing and I got all happy again, you know, like you can still be miserable and have a, you know, million plus dollar company where everybody loves your product or loves your service or loves your face, you know, like, I know a ton of dudes and a ton of girls that play music for a living and are chasing their quote unquote dream that are miserable. You know, it's not just because like it, the appearance of having, having everything you want doesn't mean that you have everything you want. It's all about your mindset. And so um, that's easier said than done for a lot of people. There are people that are living in crazy amounts of debt and crazy amounts of sickness and, Um, I understand that I'm privileged in the fact that like I grew up with nothing in addiction and drugs and alcohol and like some really heavy stuff, but also like I worked hard to get to where like, you know, I'm, I'm right now I'm sitting in the closet of my bedroom because it's the most soundproof spot in the house of a house that I own with my wife. It's a modest house, Um, but I'm a homeowner. And I came from growing up in the trailer park with like drug addict parents and stuff. You know, like I have built a life for me. And like I I, I think a lot of people have a lot of adversity, but you can build what you want and what at least, at the very least, build what you need out of life. Um, and try to live in some realm of positivity while you're doing it. Because if you're just negative and bummed and struggling and not paying attention to the, the beautiful parts of your life forever, then it was all for nothing. Cause one day we're going to be dead. So like it, try to find the beauty and whatever your situation is. And uh, one more thing, like, you know, this whole thing is about entrepreneurs and growing entrepreneurs and, uh, and people learning about how to build that part of their lives. Not everyone is cut out for it. Like my wife loves her job. She works a job for a great company. I just went to their Christmas party. I've been to hundreds of their parties now. Like they love working there. They have a great uh, culture, uh, corporate culture. She loves it. She, me and her started a a little side hustle business for like a product that she was making for a minute. And it was very successful. In like a month, we were turning some crazy profit and she didn't like it because she didn't want to be working nonstop on the weekends and, and chasing this hustle. She likes the environment of the job she has. So some people might get into entrepreneurship, try it out, try to learn some things and better themselves. And then realize like, yo, I love the stability of working for a company and having health insurance and, and whatever, you know, those things that, that those kind of jobs can provide. Um, so don't feel like a failure if you go out and try to do some stuff. 
and then realize it's just truly not who I'm cut out to be. Um, some people have that in them and some people don't. And um, at this point in my life, I have it in me and I'm really hoping to never work for another person ever again and to stay happy forever. That's what I got to say. Yeah, we're on the same boat there. I mean, I'm sure I'll have clients and customers who work for them, but I, from signing the front of my che- own check is like a big deal to me for sure. Um, wow, Andy, uh, you're an incredible human. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach back out to you for sure. I'm going to try to get you and Cody back on a show, at least Cody, and to do a part two because I'd love to hear everything from his side of the story and you know even if you guys want to do it together we could do something maybe in the new year because i think there's so much more here to tell and i think as you reflect on this episode you're gonna realize there's things you want to talk about and say as well because i think you have a great message and i want to help you share it in any way that i can so um that's up to you but i i do offer cool. it out there um And since you have a business partner and he wasn't able to get on, I'd like to talk to things from his side of the story also, just because there's so much dynamics to being a food entrepreneur. Food is a major part. You got to have good food. That's where it starts. But it's really only 10% because there's so many other moving pieces and marketing and advertising and now reels and social media and, and whatever else and making connections and positive energy and having processes like we talked about that I want to just make sure that the audience gets a full perspective. So uh, where can they find you on social media, Andy, and where can they find your burgers? Um, you know, we got a website, badluckburger.club. Our Instagram is badluckburgerclub. Um, you know, we have Twitter, we have TikTok, uh, Facebook, but, you know, we're mostly active on instagram and our website and uh that that's where we post our schedule we're not the kind of food truck that like sits at one place we travel all over town a uh, different spot every couple of days so every week we post a new schedule and some ske- some weeks we're out two days a week and some weeks we're out five six seven days a week you know it just all depends on uh how busy the schedule's filled up but uh there's always an updated schedule uh, on our Instagram and on our website. And, uh, you know, if you're, you know, I know you have some syndication all over the country and all over the world. Um, you know, whether you're coming to Nashville to eat a cheeseburger or not, uh, we're just some dudes that try to pump out like some cool, positive, uh, funny content. Um, our goal is that even the vegans in town or the vegans around the world, still want to follow us and connect with us um because we're we're good dudes having a good time and i think we we have a decent amount of following uh from other parts of the country and the world just because of that and so uh give us a follow see if you like the stuff we're pumping out come eat a cheeseburger in nashville sometime and uh you know you could follow us for a week and go i i don't really like these guys vibe you can always hit that unfollow button dude it's all good yeah, I agree with you so much. And um, one of the things that I think from the audience standpoint is like Nashville is a growing tourist place, number one. But number two is all the people that come on the podcast. The If you're a food entrepreneur or someone listening in, like these are important individuals. They're making a different. Their energy is different. They're connecting because they're trying to grow the world. And when you go meet these entrepreneurs, I guarantee you that you will feel a different energy from other entrepreneurs that you meet. I challenge the audience, actually. I challenge you guys to do it. And if you and I agree, follow or share the episode. What is it going to hurt you? Someone's going to learn something from this episode. I guarantee it. There's someone out there. Maybe it's a year from now. Maybe it's two years from now. Maybe it's tomorrow. We don't know. But if you don't share it, it's definitely not going to happen. And that's just that type of attitude and that type of thing in life. Like I'm here to share as much as I can. And I don't necessarily need to give things away. What I've learned also is how to absorb things and deflect them back out without having to give up my own energy. Like I can surround myself by a lot of positive people and Arite Syndicate and people that preach in the world positivity and they can give me messages too that I can use where I don't have to come up with it all internally. So 
I really think you'll see this in the entrepreneurs that are on the podcast and the energy that you're hearing. And if you meet Andy, which I have not yet, but I'm going to have to go try a burger now because I really, really fucking love cheeseburgers. So like just that being said, um, I'm going to come visit you and, um, they are my favorite food group. Although I love all types of food, I guess Thai is technically my favorite food, but I like burgers always anywhere I'm going. I'm in a rush need good food. I find burger food truck, burger joint, whatever. It's just a go-to. It might be a male thing. Um, but if I'm with someone else, then it's a, it's a little bit different, but try it out. Thank you, Andy. Um, you're a really cool dude and, um, I appreciate you. So with that being said, we're out.